Hey guys, my name's Pocket and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to be talking about set support and this is the first in my video series of season 11 guides. So if you're returning to the channel and you've seen my guides in season 10, don't worry, I will be getting around to updating all of the guides that I've previously released for the season 11 changes. And if you're new to the channel, then hit subscribe and you'll be able to keep up to date with all of the guides that we're going to be bringing out over season 11. As usual, I'm going to put timestamps in the video description if you want to get to anything specific because we're going to be going from the absolute basics, who is set and what can he do all the way up to the niche tips and tricks that are really going to help you master set on the support role i think set is in a really good place right now he's got a few great synergies with some champions and some items and i'm having a lot of fun climbing with him at the moment so without further ado let's get straight into it Let's start off by talking about Set's abilities and his passive so you really understand what you're dealing with when you play Set and what is in his kit. Firstly, Set has two passives. Number one is Heavy Hands. Set's basic attacks alternate between a left punch and a right punch. He will always begin attacking with a left punch, which is a normal auto attack, and then he will do a right punch, which gains 50 bonus range and attacks at eight times the speed of the left punch. It will also deal some bonus physical damage. If Set doesn't do a right punch within two seconds of doing a left Left punch this whole rotation just resets meaning that he will start with a left punch whenever he next attacks this can sound a little confusing but it really is quite simple sets auto attacks will effectively come in two auto rhythms where he'll go left punch and then a very quick right punch followed by a slow left punch and then a quick right punch etc etc set has a second passive called heart of the half beast this effectively increases sets health regeneration based on his missing health so the lower you are the more health regen that you gain this is really good especially on support where there are a lot of oppressive and very pokey enemy laners. It basically just allows you to keep up with sustain and it means that when you're really low, if you can back off safely for a while, you'll usually be able to regenerate quite a lot of health, at least compared to other melee supports and allow you to stay in lane. Next up is Set's Q and this is Knuckle Down. When activated, Set will empower his next two basic attacks for five seconds and they will deal bonus physical damage. This bonus damage depends on the target's maximum health and your bonus AD. Also, Set will gain 30% bonus movement speed when he moves towards a visible enemy champion within 2000 units range and activating this ability will reset set's basic attack timer as well as making his next punch always be a left punch this means that when you use this while you're already auto attacking there are some neat combos and rotations that you need to pull off if you want to maximize your damage but we're going to talk about them a little later on for now all you need to know about his q is that it will speed you up towards visible enemy champions that are within 2000 range and deal two auto attacks with with bonus damage. Set's W is the Haymaker. The Haymaker has a passive that stores 100% of post mitigation damage. This is all the damage after you take into account your resists and it stores it as Grit. Grit is Set's resource. It's where mana is on other champions and he can store up to 50% of his maximum health as Grit. The Grit will slowly decay over time so it's not stored indefinitely but however much Grit you happen to have will be used when you use the active ability. The active ability converts all of this Grit into a massive shield for Set. This shield is active for 0.75 seconds before it starts to decay and then all of that expended grit is then directed in a massive cone in front of set which deals physical damage to all enemies in the area however enemies that are in the center of this cone will take true damage instead of physical damage this makes it quite important to really think about where you're aiming this ability especially during massive team fights where certain champions will always be on the edge and certain champions can be in the middle but we're going to talk about that a little later on as well basically what you need to know for sets w is that you will store incoming damage for about four seconds on your resource bar and then when you activate your W you will convert all of that stored grit into both a shield for yourself and outgoing damage in a massive cone. Next is Set's E, the Face Breaker. When activated, Set pulls in enemies from both sides, dealing physical damage and slowing them by 50% for 0.5 seconds. If Face Breaker affects at least one enemy on each side, then all the enemies that are pulled in are stunned for one second. This is quite a unique ability. You're able to target it and it's not too hard to hit it on at least one person, but what really makes or breaks a good use of this ability is your positioning. Obviously, you're going to have to get yourself in a position where you can get enemies from both sides if you really want to make the most of this ability. Luckily, however, it doesn't just affect champions. It will affect minions and monsters as well, but it won't affect towers or epic monsters like Baron or Drake. Like I said, this is relatively unique and it's something that you're gonna have to get used to, but don't think of it too much as a mechanical skill. Really try to focus on your 
positioning when you use this ability, getting yourself in the right place to really make the most out of it, get your stun off and then set up whatever combo you want to follow up with. And finally, we have Set's Ult, the Showstopper. The Showstopper is an ability that you can only use on enemy champions. Set instantly suppresses them and reveals them. He then attaches to the enemy champion and dashes with them for a fixed distance in the direction that he was facing when he attached to them. He carries them for 1.5 seconds before slamming them into the ground. Targets at the epicenter, including the person that he's suppressed, will take a significant amount of physical damage, and then all enemies around it in a big AoE circle will take a reduced amount of damage. Now, one key thing to note with this ability is that the damage dealt depends on the primary target's bonus health as well as your AD. This means to get the most amount of damage out of this ability, not only to the target, but also to the enemy champions that are around the landing zone, you're going to want to ult somebody that has a lot of bonus HP. However, you're also going to want to think about the fact that you dash in a target direction for a fixed duration. This can also take you over walls and other obstacles. And this means that you can isolate certain enemy champions by either bringing them away from their team or into your team, which means it can be really good to use this on squishy champions such as ADCs as well, because you're going to get them out of position, remove them from their peel and allow your team to just melt them immediately. This is something that we're going to go over a little later on in the video as well. But basically what you need to know about Set's ult is that you're going to grab onto an enemy champion, suppress them, and then carry them in a big arc, potentially over walls as well, away from where they were in the first place. Now, let's talk about runes on set. First up, and my absolute favorite keystone on set support right now, is Phase Rush. Phase Rush is an incredible keystone, not only for what the keystone itself provides, but also because it gives you access to sorcery, which has some fantastic runes inside it that are really good for set. I'm going to go over all of these runes so you know exactly why I think you should take them, why they're better than the other runes that are on offer, and hopefully that will make you understand how to use them best, and really how to make the most out of this Phase Rush rune set on set. Before we start, though, I just want to mention that there are two other keystones that people often talk about on set support. These are Aftershock and Omnistone. I'm going to gloss over these runes. Just know that I personally don't believe that they are viable at the moment. I find that if you want to play around Aftershock as a full tank with Aftershock's very long cooldown, that you're going to be much better off playing a different champion like a Leona or a Nautilus. And I just don't find Aftershock to synergize really well with set's kit and set's early game playstyle. Likewise with Omnistone, because of the fact that set drops off so hard, I feel Feel that putting yourself in the hands of random chance just doesn't feel as good as the consistency offered by phase rush because you need to get ahead before you drop off or you're doomed if you get some bad omnistone procs and you really don't feel like you can make the most out of them it can set back the entire game for you so for those reasons, we're just going to focus on Phaser Rush. This is the rune set that I take in every single game at the moment, and I think it's put set in a very, very good place since the item changes. So, for this rune set, we'll of course go into the sorcery tree and select Phase Rush. Phase Rush grants you 25 to 40% movement speed depending on your champion level, as well as a 75% slow resistance whenever you hit an enemy champion with free attacks or separate abilities within four seconds. Now what this means is that each basic attack counts as its own hit, but each ability only counts once. So even if you hit them with the same ability twice, it won't stack. For Set, this is pretty simple. He doesn't have any damage over time or short cooldown abilities. So generally speaking, it just means that you need to hit them with three abilities or basic attacks within four seconds to proc this speed buff. Also, because Set is a melee champion, this movement speed increase is buffed to 40 to 60% instead of 25 to 40 this is an absolutely massive speed buff, and combined with the 75% slow resistance, Phase Rush can be awesome on set. It allows you to move around in team fights, repositioning yourself to effectively ult the right champion at the right time, or to use your E in the exact right placement to stun as many enemy champions as possible. I also find it super useful for trading in lane. It has a really short 15 second cooldown, meaning that if you manage to get in on the enemy, use all of your abilities, use your W for a bit of survivability, Phase Rush will proc and then you can run away at the speed of light getting out before you die or take a significant amount of damage while still having been able to get off your entire rotation and do a significant amount of damage alongside your adc to the enemy securing a good trade ensuring that you do the most amount of damage and take the least amount of damage this is especially noticeable in tower dives when you really need to get out of that tower's range as soon as possible once the tower dive is over so overall i just think this is a 
fantastic keystone. It works in lane as well as in team fights, and especially because positioning matters so much for both your E, your W, and your Alt. This slow resistance and movement speed allowing you to maneuver yourself during trades and team fights is something that you're really going to be able to capitalize on once you get some practice on it. Now, for the rest of the runes in the sorcery tree on line one, we're going to take Nimbus Cloak. We'll take this in pretty much every single game. Nimbus Cloak gives you a movement speed bar for two seconds after you cast a summoner spell. The most noticeable summoner spell for Nimbus Cloak on set support is Flash, of course. Whether you're aggressively flashing into the enemy and you want that speed buff to keep up with them or position correctly, or you're defensively flashing away and you just want to get out as quickly as possible, having that movement speed buff for a full two seconds after your flash is really, really useful. It also combines with a rune that we're going to talk about in a bit, which is Hex Flash. And just overall, Nimbus Cloak is a fantastic rune right now. Secondly, and this is a rune that we will take in every single game with Phase Rush, we will take Celerity. Celerity is a very simple rune. All movement bonuses are 7% more effective and you gain 1% movement speed. Obviously, because we have Phase Rush and we have Nimbus Cloak, but also we're going to be buying some movement speed increasing items that we're going to talk about in the next section. Celerity just works really well with everything to do with set. From the movement speed increase on your Q to your runes to your items, it's just a fantastic synergy and it's a rune that we'll always want on Phase Rush. And then in our third line, we'll take Water Walking. Water Walking gives you 25 movement speed and an adaptive bonus of up to 18 attack damage, which is based on your champion level whenever you're in the river. I think that this is super useful on support specifically because something that you're going to have to get used to on set support is roaming. Roaming is when you leave your lane to go either mid, top, or maybe into the enemy jungle for the purposes of either trying to gank somebody's lane to get kills, or maybe even just to deep ward and get some vision so that you can secure objective controls. And of course, usually this means going up into the river and having that increased movement speed and attack damage makes your roams not only quicker so that you miss less XP and CS in your own lane, but also more effective because if the enemy tries to escape through the river or ends up fighting you in the river, you're going to be more able to run them down and do more damage when you get there. Now for our secondary runes on set. Right now, primarily, I will always go into the inspiration tree. The main reason for this is, of course, Hex Flash. Hex Tech Flash Traption, or Hex Flash for short, can be found on the first line of the inspiration tree, and it's just a fantastic rune on set. Whenever your flash is on cooldown, it gives you access to a new summoner spell. It's a flash that you have to channel and charge before you can actually teleport, but if you manage to take good vision control over walls and inside bushes, you can use Hex Flash to make some fantastic plays. It also synergizes really well with Nimbus Cloak and Celerity, as you gain a rather large speed boost as soon as you finish your Hex Flash. Because set is lacking a really good engage ability, Hex Flash can make up for that, even though it is fair limited by giving you that dash into a speed boost you can make some pretty wicked plays especially in the laning phase by using walls and bushes around your lane secondly in the inspiration tree and for our final rune we're going to take cosmic insight now for those of you that have played league before cosmic insight has been changed pretty significantly for season 11 it no longer gives you any ability cooldown reduction instead it just gives you haste for items and summoner spells specifically it gives you 15 summoner spell haste and 10 item haste both of these stats are really useful on set. Firstly, the massive summoner spell haste is great for flash and ignite, giving you that extra kill potential and engage potential in lane. And also item haste is quite welcome because as we're going to talk about in the build section, you will build some active items and it's just fantastic to get those cooldowns lower so that you can really make the most out of them. The other great thing about Cosmic Insight is that unlike the other haste runes, this rune doesn't scale. You get these immediately right at the start of the game. As we've talked about, set drops off pretty significantly and getting as much of an early game immediate bonus as you possibly can is really great on set. Right now, these are the only secondary runes that I will ever take because they just synergize so well with set's lane playstyle. And then finally, for the rune shards, these are the little tiny runes below the real runes. I will take double adaptive force and a defensive choice to suit, which of course on bot lane is usually going to be armor. If they have an extremely tanky team comp, this is one that will usually involve longer fights. Then I will take the attack speed rune shard. The reason for this is that into squishy you don't normally need it. Basically, your entire job is to get onto the enemy, use all of your abilities, and then hopefully they'll be dead pretty quickly with your ADC's help. You also don't really need attack speed to take down wards, and that's something that we're going to talk about a little later on. But in those circumstances where you are taking extended fights, where they have particularly tanky team comps, I find the attack speed rune is more useful for your own damage. Really though, this is a minor choice, so take what you feel good on. Now, let's talk about items on set. Our first main choice will of course be for our mythic item. For those 
those of you who don't know, mythic items are unique items and you can only build one mythic item at a time. This means that it's a big choice to choose which exact mythic item you're going to build that game because you can't build any others. On set, the choice is pretty simple. It's between Shirelia's battle song and the turbo chem tank. Now, there's a lot to be said for both of these items, but I'm going to try and keep it relatively brief. Firstly, let's look at their stats. Shirelia's battle song offers you health, ability haste, and movement speed, and its active offers you and your nearby allies 40% decaying movement speed for four seconds. Additionally, you and all ally champions that were affected by the movement speed buff will have their next free attacks or abilities empowered with 40 to 60 on hit magic damage. Also, Shirelia's mythic passive offers you 2.5% movement speed per legendary item owned. Turbo Chem Tank, on the other hand, also offers you 350 health, 15 ability haste, and instead of offering you movement speed of Shirelia's, it gives you 25 armor and 50 magic resist. Its active is very similar. It offers you bonus movement speed for four seconds. However, this movement speed is increased to 75% bonus movement speed, but it's not shared with your allies. Additionally, for the Turbo Chem Tank, the movement speed is only when you're moving towards enemy champions or turrets. Once you get to the enemy champion, or at the end of the four seconds, you emit a shockwave that slows all champions by 40% for two seconds. Additionally, while you don't deal any extra damage with your active, you have a damage passive, which deals magic damage every second to nearby enemies. And your mythic passive offers you 5% tenacity and slow resist. So let's break this down. Firstly, you're getting the same health buff and a pretty comparable ability haste buff. However, whereas Shirelia's offers you 5% movement speed, on the Turbo Chem Tank, you're getting 25 armor and 50 magic resist. Now, this is definitely sided towards the Chem Tank. They are absolutely fantastic stats. 75 base stats is absolutely better than 5% movement speed. Also, the active is probably considered much better on set. Because you have such a high CC kit, even though your active doesn't buff the movement speed of your allies, once you get to them, you're able to lock them down for a significant period of time, and potentially even reposition yourself and ult them back into the team. This means that it's not so much of an issue that you're not also speeding up your allies, because your massive amount of CC will allow your allies to position at will. Everything has a downside, however. With the Turbo Chem Tank, it's the fact that it costs another 500 gold and arguably has a bit of a worse build path for this reason. I would say if you're doing well, if you're getting kills, and if you're not really having an issue with gold income, you should definitely go for the Turbo Chem Tank. Item to item, it outshines Shirelia's in almost every way. It's more aggressive, it scales better, and the active is much better for you personally. However, if you're behind, if you're being beaten in lane, if you're not picking up kills and you're having an issue earning gold, then I would definitely suggest looking towards Shirelia's battle song. Because it's much cheaper, and because the active also buffs your allies, both in movement speed and damage, it's a better pick when you yourself aren't doing so well, because you can get the items sooner, and you can rely on your allies a bit more with that extra utility. So to sum up, the standard build is Turbo Chem Tank, but if you're finding yourself playing particularly from behind, and you've lost lane very early on, look towards Shirelia's instead. The next choice we're going to have to make, and in fact this is a choice you're going to have to make during building your mythic usually, is boots. Boot choices on set are pretty simple. The aggressive choice is boots of swiftness, because your engage style is to just run at the enemy. The extra movement speed that boots of swiftness give you over the other boots, as well as the slow resist, are really useful. These are definitely my aggro and standard build path. However, if the enemy has a huge amount of CC, or if they're full or mostly AP damage, then you should definitely look towards Mercury's Treads. These offer you magic resist and tenacity and for those of you who don't know tenacity effectively reduces the duration of cc when it's applied to you which is really important likewise if the enemy has a full ad comp now these are becoming more and more common with the item changes because a few of the ad items are a little overpowered let's say then definitely look towards ninja tabby just like merc treads it's definitely worth reducing your aggressive engage potential in order to absolutely nuke the enemy damage so now we have our mythic item and we have our boots let's look at the core build on set support. First and foremost, is Deadman's Plate. Deadman's Plate has been a core item on set support since the very earliest days of playing him in support, and that really hasn't changed. It offers you 40 armor, 475 health, and 5% movement speed as its base stats. Additionally, it has a passive that builds up stacks as you move. Each stack will give you 0.6 movement speed, and your attacks deal one magic damage per stack and consume all stacks when you attack somebody. If you manage to get to 100 stacks, which is your max stacks, then the target will also be slowed when you attack them. This is just a great 
I am on set in pretty much every way. Armor is great, especially on support where you're probably going to be having an ADC on the enemy team. Health is great, especially with your W, which scales with your maximum health. The movement speed stat, as well as the passive that stacks movement speed, is also fantastic, both for being able to chase the enemy down, but also for roaming. When you're not attacking somebody, when you're going off for wards, for objectives, for ganks and roams, you're just going to have an extra 60 movement speed at all times, which is really, really fantastic. Add that to the bonus damage when you catch up to somebody and the slow. It really is just a fantastic item. And no matter what mythic item you choose and what boots you choose, Dead Man's Plate should always be your second item. Next in our core build is the Vigilant Ward Stone. This is just a fantastic item on set. Firstly, because you don't actually have to finish it off into the Vigilant. You can keep the Watchful Ward Stone in your inventory for a little bit. Basically, what these items allow you to do is store up to three control wards inside them, as well as increasing your stealth and control ward cap by one. This means that you can place two control wards and four stealth wards at any one time. Set loves roaming. Set loves getting deep wards. It's very safe for Set to get off into the enemy jungle, and it's a key part of playing Set. Also, like we've talked about, you do drop off into the late game on Set, so maximizing your vision control and maximizing your potential to bring that utility to your team is a really important way to stay relevant and stay helpful. The downside to this item is that you cannot build it until you've got to level 13. Now, if you've got fed and you've done very well in lane, you may well have built your mythic item, your boots, and your dead man's plate and still not even be level 13 yet. In which case, you're going to want to look towards the situational items. The situational items on set support are split up into two categories, the true support utility items and the full tank items. In the support build path, we have Zeke's Convergence. I think Zeke's Convergence, especially the new Zeke's Convergence, is a very under rated item on set. It offers you ability haste, armor, and health, and also a unique passive. You're allowed to designate an ally champion as your accomplice, and then whenever you immobilize an enemy, your accomplice's basic attacks on hit and their abilities for the next four seconds will all deal bonus damage that scales with the target's maximum health. Now this is great with an ADC, especially an ADC with a lot of attack speed, because not only are you buffing their damage massively, but you're going to be able to proc this quite often because of your high, high CC kit. It's also an extremely cheap item at just 2,400 gold, as opposed to the 2,700 or 2,900 gold that the tank items will cost. I find that this is a great late game item. Your damage is much less relevant in the late game, so by buffing your ADC's damage, it's really fantastic. And also, your gold income is probably dropping off. You're probably securing less of the kills yourself. You're no longer able to CS for your support item, so being able to have the option of this extremely cheap item is really, really good. However, if you are very fed or or if the enemy team has an extremely one-sided damage output, this means that they're either full AD or full AP, then the tank build path is fantastic. There are three items in the tank situational items. Firstly is Fawn Mail. This is one of the most common tank items on set for one simple reason. You can buy the Bramble Vest, which will apply Grievous Wounds to anybody that uses a basic attack on you. Even since the item changes and the rune changes, healing is still pretty oppressive in some team comps. So if you're having trouble with an enemy team that's got a lot of healing and your team are being stubborn about actually building anti-heals, this is the item that you want to look towards. Likewise, if the enemy team is full AP, then you've definitely got to look towards the new item, Force of Nature. Force of Nature offers you 350 health, 60 magic resist, and 5% movement speed, and its passive grants you bonus magic resist and movement speed when you take ability damage from enemy champions. I think of this item kind of like Dead Man's Plate, except for its bonuses really shine on its passive during combat rather than outside of combat. And of course, instead of offering armor, it's offering magic resist. When its passive is max stacked, it offers you 80 magic resist and 5% plus 30 bonus movement speed. Basically, if the enemy has a lot of magic damage, you should definitely be looking towards this item. So now that we're done with builds, let's talk about a few little tips and tricks that are really going to help you master set. Number one, making use of your Q to kill wards as quickly as possible. As we talked about in the ability section, Set's Q is an auto attack reset. That means that if you are still waiting to auto attack, if you press Q, you will auto attack immediately. It will also reset the cadence of his punches, meaning that after you press Q, your first punch will always be a left punch and followed up very quickly by a right punch. For this reason, when somebody puts a stealth ward down, by auto attacking once, immediately pressing Q and then auto attacking twice more, you can do all three bars of damage to that ward extremely quickly. 
quickly. This is a really good thing to learn on set support because not only can it allow you to kill stealth wards that you don't have control warded or when you don't have Oracle's lens by simply doing all of the damage before they go invisible, but also when you are out sweeping wards or you are using your control wards, by maximizing the speed with which you clear wards, you can just get more done and miss as little as possible when you're outside of lane. Number two, using your Q properly in fights. So a lot of the time you're going to be using your Q to engage and you're going to be simply starting a fight with your Q up, but for those times where you haven't used Q or the fight's going a bit longer than usual and your Q has come off cooldown, it's important that you always use your Q after your right punch. So unlike wards where you're cancelling it after one auto attack, what you'll want to do is cancel it after both of your auto attacks so that you don't reset the cadence of your punches. This means that you want to go left punch, right punch, Q, left punch, right punch to get four auto attacks off extremely quickly. This will maximize your DPS and it's useful both in fights, when you're attacking towers, or when you're clearing control wards. Number three, using your ult to remove people from their tower in laning phase. This is something that most set support players have probably picked up on a little bit, but let's talk about it a little more in depth. When you're pressuring the enemy team under their own tower, Set has a fantastic ability to remove them from their tower range. If you can manage to get behind the ADC or the support and ult them to move them outside of their tower range and towards your minions, you can set yourself up for an absolutely fantastic trade or more than likely a kill. One of the best uses for this is if the enemy is managing to freeze the wave just before their tower and are attempting to farm safely so that you don't have kill pressure, you can simply run at them under the tower, get behind them with your incredible movement speed in comparison to them, ult them back out from their tower into their own minion wave which will allow you to use your E to stun them instead of just slow them. Most of the time this will result in a kill because at level 6 you just have so much CC and damage compared to other supports. And the final thing we're going to talk about is using Hex Flash to roam. When you're roaming and when you're deciding that you want to gank mid lane or maybe even top lane, there are some fantastic uses for Hex Flash. One of my favorite ones is going into the enemy chickens, flashing over the wall under their tower to ult the enemy mid laner back into the lane and then hopefully your mid laner will be able to burst them down and secure you that kill. There are a ton of other ways that you can use Hex Flash to give you unique gank potential, especially when combined with your ult. So I really do suggest that you go and try this out and find what's working for you. And we're done. Thank you very much for watching. I really hope this was helpful. If you've got any questions, feel free to leave a comment. Or like I said, you can hop into my Twitch stream. I stream every Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And if you want to make sure you catch the next guide in this series, please do subscribe and I'll see you guys next time.